When I first got into Unity development, I really struggled to figure out the best way to access variables from another script. I experimented with tons of techniques, but could never find the one that worked for every scenario. I found out the hard way that this is a problem that's best solved on a case-by-case -case scenario. But doing all that research taught me a bunch of different techniques so that now I can pick the best solution for any given situation. In this video, I'm going to share some of those techniques with you, so you'll be equipped to choose the best option as well for your particular use case. This video is sponsored by Project Search and Replace. Project Search and Replace is a tool that's become an essential part of my workflow. With Project Search and Replace, you can search for data inside of prefabs, scenes, components, and more, and replace them all with the click of your mouse. It comes packed with features like save searches, search while playing, advanced string searching, and more that make it a must-have Unity asset. Download it now from the Unity Asset Store using the link in the description. Game development is not like other types of development. If you've ever created a web application, then you know that, generally speaking, MVC is the de facto standard design pattern to use. It's just been proven to work time and time again for that specific use case. And it's the same for a lot of types of development as well. Unfortunately, this is not the case for game development. There really are no patterns or techniques that are widely used across the board. The only one that I can think of that even comes close is the entity component system pattern. But even that one has a long way to go before it becomes a standard. And that's why I struggled for so long with the problem of how to access variables in another Unity script. I just wanted one technique that I could apply everywhere, but the reality is, that there is no standard way of referencing other Unity scripts. Instead, there are a bunch of techniques available to accomplish this goal, and I'm going to share some of them with you now. But first, let's go over a few key concepts. Unity scripts, collaborators, and dependencies. Unity scripts, or just scripts, as I'll be referring to them throughout this video, are C-sharp classes that inherit from monobehavior. A lot of the access methods discussed in this video are universal but some of them are specific to Unity and can only be used by Unity scripts. Collaborators are scripts that require a reference to at least one other script in order to function. They're the most common type of script that you'll write because, let's face it, not many scripts are designed to operate solo. Dependencies are the objects that collaborators need in order to function properly. Without them, your code just fails to run. For the purposes of this video, both collaborators and dependencies are Unity scripts. So how do collaborators access their dependencies? Or the more technical way to say it, how do collaborators resolve their dependencies? Well, there are a lot of ways to go about dependency resolution, some that I won't even be covering here because they go beyond the scope of this video. But generally speaking, methods of dependency resolution fall into two categories, external resolution and internal resolution. Each of these categories relates to where the burden of dependency resolution lies. With internal resolution, the script itself is responsible for resolving its own dependencies, whereas with external resolution, responsibility falls elsewhere. Let's dive right in, starting with external resolution techniques. The three methods of external resolution we'll be covering in this video are public properties, editor properties, and unity event methods. Public properties are a no-brainer. You simply expose your dependencies publicly so some other piece of code can resolve them. Now, this is a great technique because it's so simple and requires no overhead, but be careful when using it because code like this can often lead to bugs that are difficult to track and resolve. A collaborator that's causing a problem is hard to debug if it's not readily apparent where its dependencies are being resolved. Editor properties are like public properties, except they're much safer and, quite frankly, much nicer to use. Unity automatically exposes public serializable fields right in the editor, so you can set them yourself. And best of all, Unity even exposes private variables marked with the serialized field attribute in the same way. Personally, I find this method preferable to just making a field public. Lastly, Unity event methods are functions that are called when specific events occur at runtime. They can be implemented on Unity scripts and used to resolve dependencies whenever those events are triggered. This technique is a little tricky because it's an implicit way of accessing other Unity scripts. For example, the onCollisionEnter event method is fired when two game objects collide. It provides a reference to a collision object that, in turn, has a reference to the other game object in the collision. You can use that game object to search for dependencies using the getComponent method. Next up, internal resolution. 
The three methods of internal resolution we'll be covering in this video are the find object by type method, static instances, and dependency injection. The find object by type method searches the scene and returns an active object of the type that you pass it. If there's more than one, it returns the first one it finds. You can also use the plural version, find objects by type, if you need a reference to a list of all the matching objects. I wouldn't advise relying too heavily on this method because you don't always know what the state of your scene is going to be when it's called. It can also be pretty slow, so you should avoid using it in your update method as well. Instead, a good use case would be to use it to locate something like a manager script right at startup, something that you know will be active in your scene when it's called. Static instances are scripts that are exposed on a public static property. If you've ever used the singleton pattern, then you should already know what these are. They typically hold a reference to a script that acts as a controller, manager, or service for your game code. And as singletons, they generally expose a single instance of a script that's used multiple times in your code. Some developers despise the use of static instances, or singletons, while others swear by them. I tend to use them sparingly, but find them extremely useful in certain situations. But that topic deserves a whole video for itself. Last up is dependency injection. Dependency injection is a pattern for automating dependency resolution. It does this by allowing you to configure all of your dependencies in one place and having them resolved automatically based on that configuration. While this technique can be considered overkill in some cases, it's a great option for code that requires a more sophisticated solution. If you're interested in learning more about dependency injection, then I recommend my series on Zenject. Zenject is a lightweight dependency injection framework that was made specifically for Unity. My series covers the theory behind dependency injection and provides an overview of each of Zenject's features so you can get started quickly. Accessing variables from another script is difficult because there are so many options and no single one works for all cases. That's why it's important to know and understand all of the options that are available to you. I hope this video provided enough information to equip you to choose the best technique possible when the time arises. And if I missed any techniques that you'd like to see covered in another video, please let me know in the comments. On that note, if you found this video helpful, please leave a like and a comment letting me know what you thought. And if you'd like to discuss this topic further, please feel free to join the Infallible Code public Discord server. Last but not least, for more Unity videos just like this one, don't forget to subscribe with notifications on. I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you to all of my patrons, and a special shout out to Glasswell Entertainment, NZ, Richard Stance, Thomas, Willandingo, and Yakov.